Hi, in this video we're looking at neutrons and mass number, and I want to just start with an analogy using movie theaters again. Uh, you walk into a movie theater, you're going to see that there are empty seats between groups because that's just more comfortable for everybody. People like to spread out. Um, and so it's these empty seats. Here is the purpose of a neutron in the nucleus. Uh, neutrons help to spread out those positively charged protons in the center of the nucleus. If you think about it for a little bit, they're all positive, they're shoved in the center. Like charges repel, so they'll want to get away from each other unless there's something that's kind of creating a buffer, and that's what neutrons do. So a neutron helps to spread out the protons to make the nucleus more stable. And so the mass number is super related to this. It's the number of protons in the nucleus plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus. We call it the mass number because these are the two particles that really give the atom its significant mass. Electrons have a little bit of mass, but it's so small that we kind of ignore it. And so that's where it gets its name, the mass number, because protons and neutrons are the two massive particles in the atom. Now it's expressed in AMU, or atomic mass unit. So uh, we talked about notation in previous uh, videos. Sometimes we would put in the lower left-hand corner next to the element symbol, the atomic number there. That's just the number of protons. In the, top, in the upper right-hand corner, we put the charge. Uh, remember the number first and then the sign, plus or minus. In the upper left-hand corner is where we put the mass number. A couple different examples here to show you just the mass number, barium-137. Mass number there is 137. Cobalt's 59. Uh, again, the atomic number for cobalt's 27. That's in the lower left corner. But in the upper left corner is the mass number, protons and neutrons together, 59. And then for nitrogen, just as another example, we have nitrogen 14. Now, it's possible that we have nitrogen 14, and actually nitrogen 15 exists. That's just a nitrogen atom with one more neutron than nitrogen 14. These things are called isotopes. And isotopes are versions of an atom that have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. And a lot of elements in the periodic table uh, exist in a wide variety of isotopes. So if we're looking at mass number in the upper left, atomic number in the lower left, and I just want to figure out how many neutrons are in an isotope, keep in mind the mass number is protons and neutrons together. Atomic number is just the protons, so that means to figure out how many neutrons I have, I just subtract these two numbers. So I subtract the atomic number from the mass number. Let me show you some examples of this. Here's one, nitrogen 15, that isotope we were just looking at. The number of protons in this is easy to figure out if it's written like this. It's seven, and that's because the number of protons is the atomic number. So seven is our number of protons. It's that seven in the lower left-hand corner there. To figure out the number of neutrons, though, that's a little different. I can't just say 15, although that's tempting. I have to subtract seven away from the 15 because part of those 15 particles there are the seven protons. 15 minus seven is eight, so I have eight neutrons. So try this with these four examples. Pause the video now and calculate for yourself how many protons and neutrons are in each of these four isotopes. Okay, here are the answers. The proton amount should be the easiest thing to figure out here because it's right there for you. The lower left-hand number is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And so for germanium, uh, there's 56 protons in every germanium isotope. But in this particular germanium isotope, germanium-137, I have to subtract 56 protons away from that 137 number, and that gives me 81, which is my number of neutrons. Repeat that same process for nickel-58, uranium-235, and sulfur-33, and you'll get 30, 143, and 17 neutrons. So that's it. It's as simple as just subtracting the atomic number from the mass number to, to, to determine the number of neutrons. Uh, but also this idea of isotopes and that we can have different types of isotopes for every element uh, here on Earth, that's going to come back into play in the very next video. Thank you.